We've already seen six evidences of the divinity of Jesus. Now we come to the seventh, and it arises out of a touching story of a little 12-year-old girl who's died. After he had put them all out, Jesus took the child's father and mother and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. Then he told them to give her something to eat. This story portrays the gentleness and tenderness of Jesus like no other story in the Gospel. The way he took her hand, the way he talked to her little girl, the way he spoke in her mother tongue so she would easily understand, and the way he said give her something to eat because he knew how hungry 12 year olds could get. But his gentleness is not the main point of the story. The main point of the story is to give us evidence number seven of the divinity of Jesus, his authority over death. Now, I don't feel particularly equipped to talk about death because for some reason, death to me has always been a bit unreal. I don't know why, maybe it's a defense mechanism. I've been involved in death a great deal. I've ministered to a lot of dying people. I've taken scores of funerals. I've been in the room at least seven times when someone died. One of them died under my hand while I was praying for him. And I don't know if it was my imagination, but I felt there was a warmth in that hand for the next two hours. But nevertheless, it's remained fairly unreal to me. Now, this story is about the death of a 12-year-old child. And if I learned one thing in the ministry, it's that I don't think there's a greater pain in the world than when parents lose a child. We've got friends who've lost two children, one as a child, one as an adult, and they planted in their garden two of those bushes where the flowers turn from blue to white to show that we think of them yesterday, today and tomorrow. I don't know how people cope with pain like that without knowing that Jesus has authority over death and on that great day he will raise their children up. And so seven evidences of the divinity of Jesus. If this were a court of law and these evidences were brought before a judge, he could only bring in one verdict. The only way to undermine that verdict would be to undermine the authority of the Gospels and show that they were inaccurate, that they were lying, that they were not a good purveyor of truth. And believe me, the best intellects have applied their minds to do just that. Perhaps the most famous was a man called Professor William Ramsey who later was knighted for his academic achievements. As a young professor, he doubted the veracity of the Gospels, and so he set out to test the Gospel of Luke, which is the most historical of the Gospels. He was an expert in archaeology in the Middle East, and so he went there to do this. And after years of research, he came up with this conclusion. The book of Luke can bear the most minute scrutiny as an authority for the facts, in a degree beyond any other historians. It was written with such judgment, skill, art and perception of the truth as to be a model of historical statement. And so we have seven well-attested evidences of the divinity of Jesus, evidence that demands a verdict. But there's an eighth evidence, and it lies in the name that Jesus most often used to refer to himself, the Son of Man. He uses it 17 times in the book of Mark alone. That's one for every chapter plus one to spare. And the shock value of it arises if you read the original where that phrase was first used. It was Daniel chapter 7. I looked and there was one like a son of man coming down with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that will not pass away. Now Daniel, under inspiration, saw into the future and he saw a very complex theology. He saw God, the Ancient of Days, and then he saw what looked like a human being. But then the description that follows can be of none other than God. He saw God and he saw a man who was God. Amazing prophecy. And look at the second last sentence. All nations and people of every language will worship him. And now Jesus comes and says, I am the Son of Man. It's hard to overemphasize the shock value of that in a Jewish community 
whose foundation stone was here, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, him only shall you worship. And this man comes and says, all nations will worship me. His claim was unmistakable. And so eight evidences of the divinity of Christ, evidence that demands a verdict, and every man, woman, and child, one day will be required to answer the question that Jesus later put to Peter, Who do you say that I am?